Okay, so uh, several years ago, I took a course on this, this topic, right? Situational leadership. There's a book that I recommend. It'll take you probably an hour to read uh, called Leadership and the One Minute Manager. Uh, the One Minute Manager book, by the way, also great if you're interested in leadership. It's a very easy read. You'll burn right through it. And it's a few simple steps that will definitely make it much easier for you to be able to build teams, okay? So situational leadership is essentially, the key to this is, is that this is leadership based on the situation. It's not based on the person. So in other words, I could be a beginner at sales, but an expert at playing hockey, right? How you will treat me in hockey is going to be different than how you would treat me at something that I'm brand new at, okay? So everybody here has been brand new at something probably not that long ago right, where it's the first time you did it. Sometimes you're super excited. Sometimes it's something that is very awkward and uncomfortable and you're nervous and it's not working that well for you, right? So how do you treat those different people? So I think what'll end up happening is if you think of, so I always start over here. This is like your most, this is the person you're always looking for, right? Low confidence, which means they're brand new, first day. High commitment, what's that mean? The excited new person. Right, they come in, they're fired up, I'm so excited, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, let's go, right, but they don't know what they're doing. Okay, those people we generally will naturally do a pretty good job with, right? It's hard to screw that up, okay? But we also get these types of people. Low confidence, low commitment, right? So they don't know anything, but their attitude isn't quite there. Maybe they're nervous, they're uncomfortable, Maybe they're skeptical, they're not really sure if it's for them, they're one foot out the door on their day one, right? These are the people that we typically lose in the first three to five days. So all, all, all of you guys who have trained people have had people that started and then, oh, what happened? Right? Typically it's this person right here, okay? Then the third area is high confidence, low commitment slash confidence. Right? Commitment's like another word for almost like attitude, right? So somebody who's displayed that they can do it, but their attitude is down, right? Easy way to know, is your person in a slump, right? And the difference between how you're going to treat them is going to be based on where you, you're basically diagnosing where they are in that situation, okay? And we make this mistake sometimes of like expanding it beyond the situation. So somebody could be, right, somebody who's getting promoted to leader, somebody who's becoming a salesperson, right? They might be high confidence, high commitment. So Kelly White, probably high confidence, high commitment. She's crushing it in the field. She's murdering on appointments. She's just starting to get to learn how to close. So in closing, she's probably here. Low confidence, she doesn't really, she's learning how to close, but she's excited, I hope. Maybe she's not, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't assume that. But she's probably pretty excited. All right, I'm learning how to close. I don't know anything, right? So two different, same person, two different situations, right? So the difference here between uh, this one and this one is whether they've demonstrated success. So if the person never got, you trained them, they've never gotten an appointment, all right? They are not here. They've never proved that they are competent. Okay, and then fourth, high confidence, high commitment, that's your expert. Those are the people who are crushing it, right? I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna say Anthony Jones right now. Boom. You think, Angie, does he seem excited to everybody? Is he showing that he's pretty good at this? Okay, so first thing we're doing is we're diagnosing, right? We're diagnosing attitude and skill, all right? All right, I'm doing well. Okay, so now we're gonna go over to this little section here, and this is gonna give you, this is what you do to train these people properly. Okay, so I guess we'll start with M1 since it's kind of going here, number one. So somebody who's got low confidence and low commitment, you're gonna give them high instruction, high support, okay? So, for, for example, Paul believes in being really hard on people. No, I didn't say that. 
I did. I said that. I challenge them. You do. So if you're really challenging without being high support on a person who's a disillusioned learner, they're going to quit. Okay? And that's why we lose those people, right? They're not that sure they even want to be here, and then we're like, come on! And then they, they leave. Right? They're like, this isn't for me. Right? They're already not having a good time. Right? Like anybody who's uncomfortable in a situation, I can go ahead and say they're usually not having a good time. Okay? So if we're too hard on them, they're not going to be around. Right? They're already low commitment. Right? So we want to give them high support. But we also got to give them high instruction. Right? Because they're not competent. They need to learn the skills. They need to learn how to do it. Okay? So now we're, we're, we're giving a lot of builds. Right? We're praising what they're doing right. We're encouraging them. We're excited. And we're really trying to keep them pumped up. M2, right, low competence, high commitment, excited new person, okay? This person's fired up. That means they're in learning mode. They're going to be hungry, right? Mm -hmm. Like my little, my little son's seven. He's ADHD as hell. If he's not interested in something, good luck trying to, like, teach him anything. <laughs> but, like, the kid, when, he, when he's interested in something, he will just, like, you can just feed him with information, and he'll just do it, right? He's learning piano, and for whatever reason, he, I thought he'd hate it. He loves it. So he'll just sit down and just start playing and just going, right? If I had a, if I knew how to play piano, which I don't, I could be teaching him like every day, teaching him new stuff, and he would just be like absorbing it, right? Doesn't know how to play piano, I'm not gonna have him do a little thing in front of you guys because it would be terrible. But you can give him low support, right? He doesn't need to hear tons and tons of praise. To him, giving him lots of training feels like support. Like, this guy's training me, right? That's what the person wants. You're giving them everything you've got. You don't have to, like, boost them up. They're already excited, right? <coughs> Giving them the information, upping their skills, that's going to excite them, okay? Three, high competence, low commitment or confidence, okay? The person that's in the slump. This is a big mistake we make when we're trying to get people out of this. Okay? The mistake that we make is we give them what I've heard people in the past refer to as leader answers. Like, well, you got to work on your attitude. Let me hear your introduction. Right? You're, you're trying to like treat them like you would treat a brand new person, somebody that you would be teaching from day one. Okay? The response you'll get, and you'll know how you, you'll know if you're doing this, if this is the response you get. Yeah, I already know. I already know that. Right? You'll get that from people, right? They're in a slump, you're trying to help them, and they're being, they're almost like, they're bothered by your help. They don't want your help. Right? Because they are already competent. Now, they need some, like, maneuverability, right? They need to be kind of, usually, sometimes there's a system error, and then we've got to correct the system error. Right? They decided that they liked their pitch better, it didn't work, and for whatever reason, they just don't recognize that the changing their pitch is the reason why they're not getting it. Or their attitude isn't there. A lot of people lose their attitudes, right? The best of us lose our attitudes, right? The best of us lose our attitudes. And the weird thing about losing your attitude is that sometimes it takes somebody else pointing it out to you. You think your attitude's rock solid. My wife, like, I went through, through years where my attitude wasn't there. And my wife used to make these comments like, you know, you're always so positive with your people, but like, you're just so, like, you're just always like kind of negative and miserable like all the other time. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like super positive. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I'd be like, she would say that. I'd be like, what do you mean? Right? And then one day it, it sunk in. I'm like, oh man, she's right. <laughs> right? So how do you treat the person who's in the slump? They already know the skills. Right? They maybe need a little bit of correction. What you're giving them is high support Low instruction. Now remember, I'm saying low. What aren't I saying? No. I'm not saying no. It's not high support, no instruction, right? Because a good attitude, so, so uh, John Maxwell says, the attitude, attitude isn't everything, it's the difference maker, right? And the reason he says that is, you can't just sit down at a piano like my son Ari, 
like you have a good attitude. Rock out to Mozart. Like, like yeah, like, blah, 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 blah. my attitude's great. I can play the piano now, right? Like, you know, it doesn't compensate for a lack of knowledge or skill at what you're doing. So but if I'm really good, let's just say, everybody here watches sports, right? Let's just say I'm really good at basketball. He's really good at basketball. My attitude sucks. His attitude is awesome. Like Kobe Bryant or Michael Jordan, right? He's got like that vicious attitude. But we're equal in skill. Who would you bet on? Would anybody bet on the guy who's nagging out? No, of course not. So is that the point where you do like build, break, build? No. They'll probably tell you to stop build, break, building them. <laughs> so the first, more what you're doing there is you're just, you're not, you're not treating them like they're like the new guy. You're almost treating them a little bit more like you know what you're doing. So like in that case, a lot of times I'll say something like, Anthony, listen, man, you got a lot of guys on your team. If somebody said that to you, if one of your guys said that, what would you tell them? You know this business, man. So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm reinforcing. You know the stuff. So if one of your guys was having this, what would you tell them? A lot of times they'll say, I would tell them it's their attitude. I would tell them they're not working hard enough. Yeah, come on, you already know. So I'm treating them like, hey, listen, you're not some new guy, right? You know, like, you know what would happen. If somebody, if somebody was doing this, what would you say? If somebody said that to you, what would you tell them? And they'll tell you every time. I would tell them, stop making excuses. You have to shape up your attitude. You know this business, man. You know what to do. Right? So I'm giving them support. I'm not telling them anything. Right? Sometimes, obviously, if they're not getting it, sometimes I will. Like I said, it's not no instruction. What is it? Low, low. low instruction. So if they need it, I'm going to say, listen, Anthony, from my perspective, it is an attitude thing. And I know you can do this. Yeah, so this is where you're delegating, right? So is Ray calling Anthony Jones to go over doors? Or like check on like, hey, where's your territory? What territory? You know, it's like, he knows that stuff, right? So it's low instruction, low support. Doesn't mean no instruction. Doesn't mean no support. That's how you lose people. That eventually, if they're not close with you, your people will go. Even if we have a great opportunity, the grass always feels greener. That's why there's a saying about that. I'm actually out of time, so I can't answer your question right now. But, uh, sorry, I do want to answer your question. So, low instruction, low support, right? So it's a lot of questions. That's usually how I do that with the expert. This is like the expert, somebody you're delegating to, right? I'm not working with Ray on his clothes. I'm certainly not talking to Anthony Jones about, let me hear your intro. I'm pretty sure it's good, right? I'm pretty sure it's probably better than mine, okay? So, once again, that's on sales. If we're doing something else, I got to look at where he is. I got to diagnose based on the situation, sales, leadership, whatever it is, something new that they're getting, they're not that good at. Maybe we're treating it a little differently, but what you'll find is you'll have a better, more, more, you'll be more impactful as a leader. All right. So we can work more about this and you'll hear me talking about it from time to time, but this really did change my world. This improved all of my numbers with my team because all of us are naturally good at the hungry person that wants to do well. Right? Pretty easy to train that person. They're hungry and they want to do well. But they don't all come in that way, do they? No, no they don't. And so if you're going to hire somebody and they're going to come in skeptical, we got it's our job to give them a chance to come on board. And with that, I'm out of time. I'm actually a minute late. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.